Oh, hey YouTube, how you doing? Well, I've been really busting tail trying to get this Buick here on the road, and uh, it's taken up a lot of time, but I have been able to get a few updates done on the Le Mans, so stick around and I'll show you what's going on with that. I um, decided to go ahead and redo the driver's seat because when I was driving there was a lump that was pushing on my left shoulder blade which was basically causing me to have a mini stroke on long drives and by long drives I mean like 20 minutes or more and uh, I was hoping it was just like a wad of foam that was kind of misplaced in there when they redid the seat but uh, come to find out several springs were broken the vinyl cover the original vinyl cover was still over the seat when I pulled the black cover off so the tan vinyl was still on it. They had wedged basically just wads of foam up behind the springs, which didn't make any sense because you sit on the front of the springs, not behind them. And then I found the real problem was where the spring broke, they had just doubled it up. And you see that big lump right there where it's one, two, three layers of springs. Yeah, that's what that lump was hitting me in the back, so. With so many springs broken and all this just kind of tattered and redone in the wrong way, I'm basically just going to redo the back of the seat in foam. So as for now, I'm driving with just one seat. I took the back off the passenger seat and put it on the driver's seat, which is ten times more comfortable. And uh, cruising around like that. So hopefully I can get this one fixed and throw it on there for the passenger. So this is just a simple piece of fiberboard screwed in from the back. It's going to be under about six inches of foam, so it's not really going to matter. This is super dense foam right here, and then I have some thinner memory foam up there that's going to go on top of it, and then a uh, polyester batting. So if you ever plan on doing some interior work, working with foam, and you don't know the secrets of an electric kitchen knife for cutting foam, then uh, you need to take a lesson. Cuts through it like butter. Easy peasy. Okay, dense foam is all done and glued on. Had to do a little filler piece under there just to kind of support the top edge there. And now it's ready for the softer foam. Gonna put that on. So time to get that glued on and then it'll be time for shaping. Okay, I'm doing a quick test fit. I know it's getting kind of dark, but I uh, wanted to see kind of how it looked next to the other one and how it sat. So feeling pretty good so far, a little puffy. Just gotta do a little more trimming. Well, it's the next morning. Staying out here in the warm sun and humidity. Went ahead and got the rest of the uh, batting put on. Completely coated all the way around. So, time to go ahead, I guess, and Attempt to put the cover back on. All right. Seat is fully covered. Looks good. It's nice and padded, and it all seems to be pretty even. A little bit fatter than that one, but it's comfortable. Cool, got that one done. Next item that I wanna do is I would like to upgrade the ignition system on the old Le Mans, so I picked up an igniter set from Pertronics, and it should be a pretty straight bolt-in. So we're gonna jump on that, and uh, hopefully we don't run into too many issues. And I know this isn't exactly the best angle for everything, but I'm doing my best. There's a lot of stuff in the way. I'm just gonna start by taking off the distributor cap, because that's gotta come off. Here we go. Cool thing is, the ignition stuff in here is in very good shape. See, it looks almost brand new. 
but it still points and I'd like to replace it. Okay, now I think I'm actually gonna be able to leave my vacuum advance in place on this. And I'm just gonna remove this whole assembly with just two screws. Okay, oh, and then I'm gonna have to take my ground wire off of the coil. And then this should just pick up. Don't forget to take your uh, rotor off. Okay, nice. I'll just hold on to this because you never know. So this is the Petronics 1162A. Originally, when I called the company, they sent me another set and it was wrong. The other one was just literally basically this piece with a hole in the center and it basically just was supposed to bolt on to my stock setup. But apparently when I called them back because there's no way that one was going to work, I found out that this distributor is a 63 and older model and the one that they, the setup that they sent me was for a 64 and up. So either this re distributor was replaced at some time with an older model or on the assembly line they just had a few old distributors sitting around and they threw it in this car. Not sure, but that's my theory. Okay, that should go on there. This should go on the center. Let me get these connectors out. Okay, check the instructions. That should be right. The sensor goes on the opposite side from the uh, pivot. Yep, good. Make sure you always read all your instructions before you get started. Okay, evidently I wasn't supposed to tighten these uh, nuts down all the way because this ground wire needs to go on here that is supplied with the kit. Great. Okay, now this can go on. Make sure it locks in with your vacuum advance and then the mounting screws which one of those mounting screws on the edge needs to be installed with this ground wire on it because you guys can see what's going on right don't worry I'll show you here in a second here and run out the side and then the little knob it has a hex cut in it to fit over my six cylinder cam knobs there and then the there should be a thirty thousandths gap apparently in between these two items if I didn't over tighten this first Yeah, there should be a feeler gauge that came with this thing. Comes in the kit. Yep, I'd say so. Can you see it? No, there it is. Snug the nuts down after you get your 30 thousandths. Why am I doing this with a wrench? I have a socket. Okay, pull that out. Then put the rotor back on, just like that. Okay, gravy. There we go, that looks pretty good right about there. Now I just have to hook up my coil and my wires. I have my coil and my coil wire does run through a ballast resistor back here. Now specifically in the instructions it does say if the ignition system presently is equipped with a ballast resistor do not remove it. Okay, stay there. Oh, I'm not gonna have a chrome coil anymore. Have the flamethrower too. So this is the one that was recommended for the set. And of course it's bigger. So I'm gonna 
have to loosen that up, get that out of the way. Okay, so here's where my problem was. In the instructions, this is for the other, um, this is for the other ignition system that they sent me, which was an 1168 LS, which goes for the 64 newer Pontiac, apparently. This one does say, or to remove the external resistance and run it straight to the coil. So, just to clear up any confusion. Anybody else as confused as I am? Sweet. All right. This bolt is in such bad shape. I really need to replace it, but I don't have another one. Get in there. There we go. So I had to get a short length of wire. I got a fork connector, female spade connector, and a basically just a solderless connector in order to run the rest of my hot lead all the way back to my balance, res balance resistor. And I'll show you that in a second. But I'm gonna get these installed so they're ready to go. Okay, start off with my ground wire. I'm gonna put this little fork connector on there so I can hook it up. Where are, there they are. Next is to run this wire all the way to the back where I can hook up to my ballast resistor. I'm going to use my butt connector. There we go. Let's see how much wire I need. Okay, well, I got her all wired in. So I have the wires running up, and there's the hot lead going over to the ignition on the ballast resistor. It's not perfectly the way I want it, but once I get the proper terminals, it'll be a lot better than what that is. That's just kind of temporary. The new coil's installed. Yes, 45,000 available volts coming out of that. So that should be a much hotter spark, better fuel burning, efficiency, a little more power, stuff like that. There we go. All right. Sure, the vacuum advance moves. That's good. That seems to be clear. And last but not least, plug in the top of that. I think that's it. All right, here we go. With keys this time. have an accelerator pump. That's why it stumbles every time I give a little bit of fuel. Well, that's not good. Before I forget, there's a new piece of equipment on this car. See this right here? Yep. You know why that gets replaced? Because it goes out. Thank goodness I had just parked in my parking spot at work and turn the wheel with the ignition off and it's sitting still to straighten the wheels out when that thing completely shredded in half. So I was lucky that uh, I was sitting there at work when it happened. But now that's new, it's safe, and it actually steers better. Go figure. So I guess sitting out there in the Arizona heat, I just dry rotted that old rag joint. 
which, oh, by the way, if you go to buy one to replace it, it is in the help section at AutoZone or probably any other stores. But if you call it a rag joint, they have no idea what you are talking about. It is a steering coupler joint. So anyway, well, time to take it for a test drive. Well, I've done quite a bit to the interior on the old girl. Got the new turn metal put on the dash, so it's not all yellow and kind of goldish colored anymore. I did a little bit of touch-up paint over on the glove box lid and the dash. It's all one color now. One of the old, uh, was that buckskin tan or whatever the heck it was? Over here around the ignition lock there. Looks good. Um, I didn't do really underneath here too much. I gotta touch that up, but that's real easy. That was at least all black colored. Uh, so it's getting there. Got my Bluetooth stereo installed. Simple as that. And then it's a volume and it Bluetooths to my phone. So it works out really well. I'm gonna probably end up putting a little box or something inside here just so I can put stuff in there where the old radio used to be. But yeah, it's looking real good. Now one of the main things is, is the new exhaust. Now my old exhaust <clears throat> wasn't working out too well because it was full of holes. So as you can see, I ran all new two inch pipe all the way back and then through a nice thrush hush muffler single exhaust running out the back right there so it just kind of kept it stock looking but the difference in sound on this is incredible you can give a listen almost much quieter up in this area than it was before. Yeah, that old exhaust was just so hacked together with bits and pieces and tape and junk. You know this thing's running really good now and it looks fantastic and it starts right up and it idles really nice time to take around a little shakedown kind of road test um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a trip a couple hours away and see how it runs I think it's about time for that unfortunately before we get to our destination I gotta make a little stop you see squirrels have been infiltrating my perimeter all summer long so I gotta get rid of something uh, I think this makes number 17 that I am relocating to a funner area. <laughs> Better not have peed in my trunk. Nope. Good. Let's see which end is the open end. There it is. Oh, oh, oh. Ready. Somebody's ready to go. It's really hard to do this. Uh, One-handed. Oh, there he goes. All right, go live in the woods, buddy. Boom.
55 come out. Mark 4 Ram Air Carter High Rise set up for B Floor End. Well, I was all night. 390 horsepower, 500 foot pounds of torque. Whatever that is. It's over right there in the glove compartment if you want to take a look. Yeah, she's got a hard pull. Well, I've been to Sandwich, Illinois. And I've even been to Mexican Hat, Utah. And now I've officially been to Burnt Corn, Alabama. It's a cozy little area. Very old school. Kind of run down, but very interesting. Let's pull up here in front of the post office, get a picture. Alabama. I don't know if I plan a day 